Edmonton's River Valley is such an important part of our city that we're going to take a weekly look at the issues surrounding it this summer. We're starting by going back in time, looking at the history of development of the area. Marlena Wyman is an artist, and she served as Evanston's Historian Laureate from 2018 to 2020 and joins us this morning. Good morning, Marlena. Good morning, Mark. So when did the city turn from development in the River Valley to more of a focus on recreation, maybe preservation of the area? Was there a time that that all sort of happened? Yeah, it actually sort of started as parkland became more industrialized, went back to parkland because, as we know, the Edmonton area was originally the home of indigenous people, so it was all parkland. And then uh, after Edmonton was incorporated as a city in 1904, uh, they started to, it really was a visionary city at the time, started to look at developing parks pretty much right away. And um, in 1907, landscape architect Frederick Todd was hired to design Edmonton as a city beautiful, which was an international movement at the time. Oh, really? Which included a, a huge amount of green space and beautiful architecture. Did they follow through on most of those plans? Or? They were going to, but sadly, uh, the, the Depression and other economic uh, okay. uh, aspects came through and, and were not able to follow through as much, although still um, the City Valley Parkland was retained and, and the development of city parks. Well, it's interesting, too, that um, there's some sort of figures who really you know, are prominent in, in the preservation, and, and, and a lot of them are women. Right. Um, in the early part of last century, Gladys Reeves was an important figure in the city. So what role did she play? Yeah, that's right. Gladys Reeves uh, came to Edmonton from England in 1904 with her family. And uh, she was probably best known for her role as um, one of the first women photographers uh, west of Winnipeg to own a photography studio. Uh -huh. But she was really an active citizen. And one of her most significant contributions was uh, her tireless advocacy for the beautification of Edmonton. And the re this was when, in the 1920s, was when um, industrialization had pretty much filled the river valleys. And it was her and a group of citizens who were bringing it back to beauty. And she was um, instrumental in the formation of the Edmonton Tree Planting Committee in 1923. And a lot of the trees that you see along uh, the boulevards in downtown Edmonton and surrounding areas uh, were because of that tree committee, which was a volunteer committee, mm -hmm. had planted those trees. And in 1924, she was also the first woman to hold the position of president of the Edmonton Horticultural and Vacant Lots Garden Association. And Vacant Lots Garden <laughs> Association. It's interesting that that's 100 years ago. And even today, we're talking about planting many, many more trees in Edmonton. And the vacant lot sort of uh, garden program it's probably not the same program, but that goes on today, too. It continues, and the Horticultural Society continues as well. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. And, and obviously in the 20s and 30s, uh, there was a lot of in in industry down in the River Valley. How, I mean, it's kind of funny. Did they just sort of phase it out as they went? Or? Yeah, actually, well, um, because industry tends to follow rivers, it was a natural thing for that to happen. There right. were gravel pits, there was mining, there was industry for building uh, cement and plants. Coal. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but at a certain point, the city was a very visionary city and understood that this was an eyesore. Yeah. And so actually, the city itself moved in, removed all of those, and returned that area to parkland. Okay, so another major figure is Margaret Chappelle. Now, I saw a headline that stated, quote, the artist who saved McKinnon Ravine. So, Absolutely. Yeah, what's that story? <laughs> yeah, um, Margaret Chappelle was an artist, and in 1964 there was the Metropolitan Edmonton Transportation Study, which was supposed to um, fix the transportation problem in Edmonton, and unfortunately sometimes it becomes a single-minded without considering anything else with these types of plans. And so they were going to build uh, freeways through the River Valley Ravines, through five River Valley Ravines, including Mill Creek and McKinnon Ravine. And the only thing that stopped that was citizen protest, and Margaret Chappelle was the one who led it. Uh, she and her husband lived a fairly reclusive life, but this idea that the city council put forward made her so mad that she, she came out to fight the freeway and got other citizens to do so. And it took 20 years. Yeah, because it seemed like they stopped it early and then the city kept restarting and, and, and physically was t taking down trees, right, and, and yes. transforming these ravines. Trees were taken down in the McKinnon Ravine and um, sewage and so forth were, were starting to be put in. And the, but the citizen um, advocacy was so strong 
that finally the city realized this is really important to, to Edmonton's identity and to making it a livable city is to keep these ravines. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it took 20 years. And that is a lot of, um, a lot of citizen protest and a lot of strength of citizens to bring that through. Yeah, I mean, did they physically go out and stop machines? Were they in the? Were they going to city council? How are they doing it all? All of it. Writing oh, yeah. letters, going to city council, laying in front of bulldozers, literally. Really, like that? Yes. Yeah. They were. They. They meant it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and it's just as odd to me that um, it seems that over time citizens are the ones who come forward to save the city, when the city itself should be forward thinking and visionary enough. But as I said, I think what happens is it just becomes so single-minded, we have to do this. And now right. it's the, we have to do densification. And then what's important to city and to the people who live here, like the trees and the green spaces, becomes forgotten. So citizens have to come forward and say, hey, don't forget, this is what's important. It always seems well. like there's competing, you know, obviously priorities, right? There's, there's uh, people who want uh, commercialization, they want business. Obviously, it takes that to, to make a city vibrant. But then at what cost? Well, it, that's the thing. It appears to be competitive. It isn't. It's not a situation of or. It's not a situation of we have, we have uh, development or we have green space. We can have both. Mm -hmm. It just takes um, the proper kind of planning to do so. You know, I find it interesting, too, that these are women who are involved in this, Gladys Reeves, Margaret Chappelle, also artists. Uh, Gladys Reeves was a photographer. Um, Margaret Chappelle was an artist. You were an artist. Yes. What is, well, how is this this is kind of a through line. I think it's pretty natural for women because we've always had to fight for our rights. Uh, artists as well are, mm -hmm. are often a forgotten segment of society. And so unfortunately, we're used to doing this. <laughs> we do it well. And so we carry forward and, and do it for other, um, for other things that need to be done as well. I think it's just part of part of being a woman and unfortunately we can't every time we move forward and gain something we can't just say oh good that's done because you got to keep pushing got to yeah. keep pushing that's right i understand that uh, margaret chappelle's last civic gesture was donating her fortune to a local charity yeah she and her husband did not have children and after he died she um she had a love of nature and of animals so she took in stray cats that became very important to her and so her 3.7 million fortune went to the edmonton sbca when she died wow yeah Great story. Marlena, thanks so much for coming in to tell it. All right. Thank you, Mark. Marlena Wyman is an artist who also served as Edmonton's Historian Laureate from 2018 to 2020.